Good afternoon or morning, depending on where you're listening to college football fans. What's going on, y'all? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Three and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio. For all that is sports. How's it going, everybody? We have so much to get into today with so little time. First things first, can we get a hand clap for these high school playoffs? My goodness, the awesomeness that is these high school playoffs is great, especially down here in Southern California. So many cool things going on, and certainly excited to see who will be this year's champ in every division. We'll find that out. Also, we got plenty of news from those lower divisions in the FCS in, of course, the junior college systems. And you already know, we're talking plenty of D1 single A. Hey, guys, Michigan's leading Penn State right now. I'm just saying. So, yeah, lots to get into today, as well as tonight's game of the week should be a solid one. As we get her name and Virginia, we'll find out. With that said, welcome to another edition of Three and Out. Call this edition right here on I Sports Radio. We'll be right with ya. Let's do the dang thing once again. Thank you for tuning in, and here we go right here on I Sports Radio. Your directory for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 as always, college football fans. Everyone, how is everyone out there doing? My goodness, sorry, I just got home from work and craziness going on as per usual. Big ups to my boy, our boy Marcus Lowe's great in the chat room, man. Always showing love, and we appreciate you so very much, kind sir, for tuning in. But we have some things to get into today, and man, it is always a pleasure. So first and foremost, let's just cut it all and get right to the chase. Welcoming, he is my co-host and die-hard college football fan, right alongside myself. He is Newport Harbor alum, and that school is doing pretty well right now. And he is, of course, the founder and host of both Set Point, our volleyball show here at IE Sports Radio, and the SoCal Spring Sports Show, our Southern California sports show here at IE Sports Radio, and of course, co-host of this show, ladies and gentlemen, he's the man here at IE Sports Radio. We appreciate him so very much, Mr. Taryn Rodriguez. What's going on, Taryn? How are you doing today, brother? Hey, Larry B. It is great to be on. Thank you for having me. I'm ready to get this party started. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Well, I got to tell you. This is definitely uh, been a crazy week. And, well, we're going to start things off with some craziness from yesterday. Like, oh, actually, not yesterday, but um, from earlier this week, we had some good college games on. College on a Tuesday, you got to love it. I love it when I'm training people at the gym and I see these games on. I'm like, wait a minute, that's a live game. That's cool. But uh, earlier this week, Miami of Ohio knocked off Buffalo. Buffalo, man, they were so good for so long. I mean, they had a – well, not really. They had a good little stint. Unfortunately, they're not so great. Uh, dropping to four and six, but Miami of Ohio five and five on the season. So big ups to them. Forty five to eighteen victory at home over Buffalo on Tuesday night. Also, Western Michigan over Akron forty five to uh, to forty. That's our sixth win of the year. They're now bowl eligible. And we have here, according to Taryn, and then we have the Ohio Bobcats who haven't done really anything. This season, well, they get a nice victory over a team with six wins, Eastern Michigan, the Eagles. And you know what? 34 to 26, I'll take it. Nice win for them on the road. So that is definitely one of those wins that's like, a, you know, not going to win you any bowl games or get you bowl eligible or get you the national championship or anything. But, hell, it was good enough victory for them. So Toledo over Bowling Green, 49 to 17. Northern Illinois over Ball State, 30 to 29. And a very, very close one, man. Oh, my gosh. This thing ended on a last-second field goal by John Richardson. Third to yard field goal for him to win the game. Kind of crazy. Um, they uh, – Sorry, Ball State actually kicked a field goal a minute and 42 seconds before that to go up. So it's just, it was a field goal game at the end, but awesome job for them. Northern Illinois, man, going to 7-3 and three on the season now. And we have the Chippewas, of course, Central Michigan, just stomping all over Kent State, 54-30. to 30. So big ups to them. That was on Wednesday night. We had a Thursday night game that was actually pretty good. Um, I know everybody was 
very caught up, and so was I myself. Not, of course, you know, I'm watching that NFL. And Ravens and Dolphins, of course, we had uh, <laughs> we had some interesting things happening, of course, in that game, which we'll get into tomorrow on the defining moment. But, oh, my gosh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm three and out this week as I'm bringing it back. But, yeah, some fun stuff happening. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Probably one of the most iconic touchdowns you're ever gonna see from the big from a big man. All right, it was it didn't count? Like sucks, but still. Uh, but yeah, we're all wrapped up in that. But we actually had a really good college game on that night as well, where Pitt, yes, Pitt. You know that team that we just talk about every now and then. That's sometimes good and sometimes they're just like, what's going on? Uh, yeah, that team. Well, they're actually freaking ranked right now, of course, twenty-one, and they will knock off North Carolina. North Carolina has been up and down so freaking much in this year. They were ranked, and then it's like no one thought they deserved it, and then they fell off and proved us all right. And then they play overtime versus Pitt right now, which is actually. Well, you know, pretty good on Tuesday, on Thursday night. Regardless, it would result in a victory for the Panthers as they win this thing. 30-23 in overtime. Very good game. And then last night, uh, well, number five, Cincinnati had no problem stomping out the Bulls of USF at 45-28 on the road. And Boise State and Wyoming actually had a pretty good game as Boise State will win this thing 23-13 to in the uh, Mountain Conference, of course, the Mountain West Conference, and yeah, that's how all that good stuff happened. As of right now, we have some pretty good games going on, uh, you know, unless it's Alabama, New Mexico State, where it's a blowout at halftime, 49-3. As I mentioned earlier at the half, Michigan State is actually leading Penn, uh, sorry, Michigan is leading Penn State, which is interesting because it's only one point, but it's like, okay, Michigan, who are you really? Penn State's tough, but are, look, show us something. Blow this team out. If you really got them kind of balls, blow this team out. I don't know if they will, but we'll see. I'll give them props for that right now. But anyway, number eight, Oklahoma, and number 13, Baylor going at it right now, tied 7-7. Solid game there. Very solid game. So we got some good ones going on at the moment. But uh, definitely not all of them, but, you know, got some going on today. And then we got some great ones going on today, which I really, well, literally just a few. I wouldn't say they're all great, but we got a couple games that are definitely worth watching. So with that said, good stuff there, starting things off. Let's get into these high school playoffs, man. Down here in Southern California, of course, they are heating the freak up. And we're going to go through all the divisions really, really fast, 1 through 14. And, of course, talk about all the uh, high schools around the country, well, at least in the top 10 for right now, um, doing their thing around the, around here. But with that said, Taryn, well, there were some Orange County games, of course, that went down this last past weekend. And the one you were actually at last night, man, your team, Newport Harbor, I did not think they were that good. I thought they were like a, you know, kind of like my school, like a Paris-like school where they just weren't so strong. Well, that I am wrong, or wronger than wrong, because they're actually in the semifinals right now of their division. So, Taryn, talk to us, brother. How was that game last night? Yeah, the game was really good, and honestly, it took Newport Harbor a little while to get it going, considering they were back and forth early with Santa Barbara. It was 14-14. The game was actually at Santa Barbara, so it was quite the trek, but honestly, Newport Harbor looked relaxed after they took the 21-14 to lead. Then they got a pick six, and then the defense really stepped up, and one thing that really also stood out to me was that their offensive line really kept their quarterback from being sacked. He has not been sacked in the postseason. And honestly, their quarterback, when I interviewed him last night, you could check out my stuff on my Twitter page. Um, he gave love to the offensive line. That is definitely a given right there because the men on the offensive front definitely deserve the credit because they do the, a lot of the grunt work. So, all in all, it was a big night. Um, a junior wide receiver and defensive back, Josiah Lamarque, had five touchdowns. He has five touchdowns. Four were in the air from A.J. Gutron Moore, and then one was off of a pick six. So it was quite a entertaining night, and Newport Harbor is really strutting their stuff as they'll play Dominguez at Newport Harbor on Friday. Which is absolutely crazy, man, because – this, by the way, this is Division 6. I didn't know that they were this high, man. So your high school is pretty solid. But in this division, a couple teams that I know all too well um, are actually Notre Vista. As Notre Vista is a very strong school. I played them all four years in high school. 
uh, lost on the freaking um, by way of a goal line freaking fumbled snap uh, on the last second where the defense recovered. Well, right around there on my senior year, didn't get a chance to beat those guys, but always had good play, good games with them. Of course, me playing for Paris and them Novi, great great school. But they have gone on to become a very solid school, at least since we played them, or maybe they've been that before. I don't know, but at least I knew them afterwards. They have been damn good. Apparently, they're playing in Division 6, which is pretty dang good. And, uh, well, they would knock off Monrovia 27-25 to at home last week. And, kind of crazy, in this same exact bracket, also from the Inland Empire, by the way, Notre Vista in Riverside, would take on North High School. And this is not JW North. This is North out of uh, Torrance in California, which is in L.A., and, well, freaking TVHS, Temecula Valley, which is not too far from me, where both Celia and I live right now. Um, but, yeah, man, Temecula Valley, the Golden Bears. I got I know coaches there, all right, that used to coach me at Paris. 43-20 to 20 last week. Last night, Notre Vista and Temecula Valley go at it. And, man, it seemed like it was a good game. But TVHS will pull this thing out and win it 27-14. to 14. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a good – that was a great matchup. Novi goes home. So all the best to the Braves moving forward, you know, next season. But TVHS is not done. Just a couple of years ago, I knew one of the coaches on the field. I just talked to him recently. He's a teacher at Paris High. Great guy. But um, big, out, big ups to Coach Sotelo. But he, uh, of course – Coached during the year where TVHS, like two years ago, went all the way to the final. I forgot what division. I think it was seven, but they defeated um, Cerritos, not Cerritos, uh, Cyprus in the final. And just amazing job by them. But Temecula Valley, man, will go on to face Camarillo. That is going to be awesome. And, well, there you have it. So kind of crazy because Temecula Valley from the IE, We'll take on Camarillo, and Dominguez will take on Newport Harbor. Um, I think it'd be awesome to see Newport Harbor to make a Valley final here, man. What do you think? Yeah, I think that would be a great final as well, just because, you know, obviously your neck of the woods versus my neck of the woods, I think it would be a phenomenal final, but you got to get past the uh, semifinals first, and Newport Harbor is going to have their work cut out for them against Dominguez. They're a very hot team in terms of their wins this season. They finished third in their competitive league with Downey and Warren. And then looking at Temecula Valley's opponents, Camarillo is nothing to sneeze at. That team is legit. Yeah. And they're long yearning for a CIF championship. Uh, absolutely, man, and certainly, certainly, certainly good football coming up here. So let's go and take a look at all these divisions um, coming up. So really quick and dirty, you guys. Last night, so we're going to roll through these. Taryn, if you want to go ahead and chomp on any of these at the end of them. But really, really quick, last night, semifinal action, of course. Division 14, Indian Springs over Hawthorne, 22-15. to Rialto over Gary High School. Hey, Gary's in the playoffs. I remember playing them in high school. Solid school, but uh, Gary fifty to thirty five, and they move on. Alhambra over Hamilton twenty six to six, twenty one to six, and Luara hey out of Anaheim will defeat Pomona twenty one to seven, and it'll be Indian Springs in Rialto uh, versus Rialto and Alhambra versus Luara, and that is the Division fourteen semifinal. Anything for that one there, Taryn? It's impressive that Laura has been able to turn their season around. I think they got like third in their in their league, and then they managed to just turn the tables once they got in. Like once they found out they were in, and they were in Division fourteen. Yes, it's a low division, but they definitely need this uh, playoff run, and they're doing great. So all in all, I'm impressed. But can they keep up in the semifinals against our? Alhambra, that's going to be a long drive up there. Bro. Yeah, it really is. But solid game there. Also in the semifinal for Division 13, South Pasadena, hey, defeats Western Christian. Western Christian also, I remember playing them uh, versus well, when I was coaching at Paris. So got, uh, hats off to them. They made it to Division 13. But they would lose to South Pasadena 49-6. to 
Um, they will move on, and Montclair will defeat San Gabriel 48-12 to moving forward. Uh, South Pasadena will play Montclair next week. Anaheim will defeat, hey, that's why my, my uncles and aunts went to this school, man. Theos and Theos. Anaheim will knock off, uh, let's see here. I th- actually, no, I'm sorry, I think they went to Magnolia. But regardless, Anaheim will knock off San Bernardino, which is impressive to see San Bernardino up there. Uh, 41 to 33, and I think they had solid school. Um, the same as we're seeing them not too well, not, not too long ago. And then from my neck of the woods in Riverside, Arlington High School, the Arlington Lions will knock off Heritage Christian 35 to 24. Super cool next week. It's going to be OC versus IE once again as the Anaheim colonists will be taking on the Arlington Lions in the semifinal, and the winner will play, of course, the winner of South Pasadena and Montclair. What you got for us, Darren? That Montclair and South Pasadena matchup is going to probably be high scoring based on what I saw with their quarterfinal matchups. Like, I hope there's some defense. I want to see some defense. I don't really want to see a high scoring affair, in my opinion. But quite impressive for Anaheim to uh, get to the semifinals. Like, I think that was kind of the dark horse in terms of Orange County teams making it to the semis uh, in that division. Pretty impressive, right? On to division number 12, or division 12. Compton, hey, how about the tar, the freaking Tar Babies? I believe, right? Tar Babes, right? Isn't it? Yeah, Tar Babes. Tar I, I, I wanted to make sure I got it right. But yeah, freaking Compton, man. Tar Babes, get it going. And uh, what a job for them, man. They freaking get that victory 24-21 to over Walnut. And wouldn't you know it, another team from the Inland Empire, not too far as well from Hemet, California, which is really, really close uh, to where I grew up, of course, and right here in the Inland Empire. Talkwitz. They did it last week, man. They defeated Harvard, Harvard Westlake. Now they defeated Victor Valley last night, twenty to fourteen. Compton and Tokwitz will go head to head. That's pretty cool. Then we have Quartz Hill defeating Polytechnic, forty-one to thirty. Of course, Poly, the uh, Polytechnic Panthers out of Pasadena. Uh, look at that victory there, forty-one to thirty-four. Quartz Hill moves forward, and Rosemead. Actually, sorry, we uh, Woodbridge will defeat Rosemead, forty-eight to fourteen. And there you have it. We have our final Quartz Hill and Woodbridge. We'll take on the winner of Compton and Tokwitz. And you better believe I'm pulling for Tokwitz. What you think? What you got about this one, Darren? I was very surprised to see Woodbridge make it out, just because their league isn't really the best. I think it was the Pacific Valley League, but either way, I was actually surprised they put up 48 because one local writer in the area of of Rosemead said that Rosemead was going to, look, Rosemead loved this matchup and they were going to win easily and he even booked it. So, uh, for old takes exposed, uh, do your thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Darren. Well, 29 Palms in Division 11. 29 Palms will knock off Village Christian 28 to 24. Jordan. Jordan, dude, Jordan out of Long Beach. I know they had some hits. They had some tough times, but Jordan High School, solid school. Now they will defeat Granite Hills, thirty-four to twenty-seven. Uh, great job by them last night. And well, there is the victory. Vista de Lago, which is crazy because I remember once again playing them in Paris. Man, we played them all four years, or at least I think three of those years. Pretty, I think yeah, it was three, it was three years, but. Great stuff there, man. Definitely solid school. I uh, never got a chance to beat them, but they were great, you know, pretty good school. And now they're really, they're getting, they're catching fire, man. They knocked off Torrance last night, 30-0, to zero, uh, as they'll move on to the to the uh, semifinal. And then Polly, a school that's not too far from Mr. Lago, right here in Riverside. Mr. Lago, by the way, in Marina Valley. And, uh, Marina Valley, California. And Polly, of course, uh, that's, that's awesome, man. Riverside Polly. I mean, remember coaching against them and playing them in competitions and everything, at, like, Lima competitions. Polly, man, in passing league, of course, uh, solid school. 48 to 20, Northwood will knock off Polly. And that is it. So we have Vista the Lago, the Ravens taking on Northwood, of course, out of Irvine, California. Another OCIE matchup. And then 29 Palms in Jordan, Desert versus LA, man. So that is your semifinal for Division 11. Taryn, what you got? 
So in other words, going to have to be wary of that Vista Del Lago defense just because they pitched two shutouts. And I like how Vista Del Lago went from 7 nothing victory in round one to 30 nothing victory in the quarterfinals. <laughs> Let's see if they can keep up with that Northwood offense who produced 35 and 48 points in the first and second round. Should be fun. So... Last night, we had a good one here. Uh, Salsi, and I believe I don't want to picture the name, will knock off Fillmore. This is Division number 10, so Division 10. Catella! Hey, I know that. I think, yeah, that's, that's over there, and that's Anaheim territory. Taking on St. Anthony. However, St. Anthony will knock off Catella out of Long Beach. Um, 48-17, to 17, moving on to take on Salsi, or Salesian, and I believe is how you say it, uh, in the semifinal. And then the bracket right beneath it, Kaiser. I know a thing or two about Kaiser. Solid school out of Fontana. Very, very solid school right here in the IE. Uh, we'll knock off, actually, no, we'll get knocked off by Northview of Covina, an L.A. school there. And they will go on to take on, uh, I believe, as a matter of fact, today we have Covina taking on Palmdale. So, uh, I don't know. If, well, yeah, that's actually happening today at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. And, yeah, we'll find out who plays Northview next week. But that is the semifinal. Taryn, you got anything for us? St. Anthony is very underrated. That team was one of the more forgotten about teams. Now they're one of the more on-the-radar types of teams. And I think for that... Uh, Covina Palmdale matchup. It might have had something to do with field availability. Like sometimes these schools share fields and whatnot, so they probably were unable to play on their field on Friday, and they had to push it to Saturday because Covina is the home team and whatnot. So there's that craziness, man. Well, off to Division Nine, Claremont. Hey, <laughs> out of Claremont, California. These guys. Uh, Claremont will get this victory over Laguna Beach, 38-7, to man. Moving on to take on St. Margaret's. St. Margaret's will defeat San Dimas High School, man. The San Dimas Saints, uh, pretty good pretty good game right here, actually. 38-28, to moving on to take on Cla- uh, Claremont next week. Once again, that is St. Margaret's taking on Claremont next week. And then we have Western and Colony going head-to-head last night where Colony... Will win this thing uh, out of Ontario, of course. Uh, 52, look at this, man. Solid game here. 52 to 27 will defeat Western as they move on to take on Ventura. Ventura last night defeated Rancho Mirage 35 to 19. So there are your semifinals of Division 9 Colony versus Ventura. And Claremont taking on, taking on St. Margaret's. So, how you got, what, you got about for, uh, what you got for us there, Terry, in Division 9? Yeah, some of those. Uh matchup for high scoring affairs and they look pretty one sided outside of St. Margaret's San Demon. So I really want again, I want to see more defense and I'm interested to see what uh St. Margaret's can has to offer just because their head coach is Corey Romine, former NFL player who played for the Carolina Panthers. So I think that semifinal between Claremont and St. Margaret's is gonna be fun. Nah. Oh, that should be pretty cool. I did not know that. Fun facts. Taryn is a star is a starburst. Taryn is a snapple, you guys. He's got all kinds of facts. So Highland last night will take on California High School. And Highland knocks off uh, in Division 8, by the way. 44 to 12 that will knock off California. And I'm so sad to report to my beautiful fiance. Her school, the Ramona Rams, right out of Riverside, California, right next to Cal Baptist, which is where we're going to be tonight for game two of the tip-off, of course. This will be Cal Baptist tonight in action. I think it's Mississippi State, uh, Mississippi Valley State. But, yeah, looking forward to that game tonight, of course. We'll be in the house. Lance is Lance. But we have that going on. But Ramona, unfortunately, would fall to Serrano out in the desert. Two schools sporting that baby blue, and well, Serrano would get the tougher, we'll, we'll get the victory here. I guess their baby blue is better, just kidding. No, but they got it done, 42-21 last night, uh, and we'll move forward. And then right here, another school right next to me, the Elsinore Tigers, man. Usually a solid school, and they would play Silverado, and everyone knows the freaking Silverado Hawks, at least if you got... If anybody knows about desert football, man, Silverado, I remember playing them when I was a freshman. They blew our freaking the doors off the bus, basically. Amazing school. Great, great football. I think them and Paris played a couple years ago in CIF. They knocked them out in the first round. 
Um, that was Paris' first time making it in a long time. I think since like 03 or 02, whatever. But anyway, Silverado, man, knocks, knocks off Elsinore big time. 56 of 21 last night as a long drive home for Elsinore, unfortunately. But uh, Silverado, man, gets that victory. Moving forward, take on Buena, and as Buena defeated El Dorado last night, 24 to 20. What you got, Darren? Oh, sorry. Um, so, I was, that was, El Dorado and Buena matchup was actually refreshing to see because every matchup was a blowout. And I thought this whole CIF competitive equity was supposed to get rid of blowouts. So, thank you, El Dorado and Buena, for having a close quarterfinal matchup. I don't know about you, but I like close quarterfinal matchups. But El Dorado had quite a season. I saw them in week one against Fountain Valley. They looked solid. So I got to tip my cap to El Dorado on a fantastic season. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Next up, Pasadena and La Mirada went at it. Division 7. Pasadena, 41-31. to 31. Moving on, taking on Aquinas. To find, Aquinas uh, will defeat Lusinger last night. I think that's how you say it. 35-34. to 34. Also, Miracosta defeating Altaloma, 41-14. to 14. And St. Pius just does it again. They will defeat Rio Hondo Prep, 34-20. to 20. Kind of crazy. Heritage, a school that I'm subbing out that I guess might be working at soon in the Paris Union High School District. Um, they knocked off. Her- they beat down Heritage last week, 34-7. to 7. And, well, St. Pius continues. I think they won CIF last year. They were at the Division 14 level or something like that. Now they're in Division freaking 7. And they're going head-to-head with everybody. They got Miracosta this week. So Miracosta, St. Pius. And Pasadena Aquinas, what you got there? The Air Costa has really had himself quite a phenomenal season. And it also helps that they play in the Bay League with Palos Verdes and and uh, Culver City, which honestly, both those teams are really talented year in and year out. So all in all, Near Costa and St. Prius, we'll see what happens with those two. I'm excited for that matchup, so... Let's see. Let's see it. We are talking about Division Six, of course. We got Camarillo and Temecula Valley taking on, of course, Terran's alma mater. Well, the winner of Terran's alma mater, uh, Newport Harbor or Dominguez. So it should be a good, solid game there. Off to Division Five, man. Uh, Valencia and La Habra go at it. Valencia knocks off La Habra, twenty-four to six. As Chino Hills knocks off Summit, fifteen to eight. They play each other next week. El and then El Modena. We'll knock off Beaumont. Beaumont, a very tough team. I coached against them a couple years ago. They beat us like crazy. Amazing stuff there. And wouldn't you know it, man, uh, well, 33-14, to 14, though, the Cougars will go down, and El Modena will move forward to take on Oaks Christian. I am disappointed. I'm just kidding. I know a lot of coaches at J-Dub North. They were my old, some of them were my old teach, uh, coaches and um, old uh, teammates, even, at J-Dub, J-Dub North. 24 to 21, Oaks Christian wins this one last night. Hats off to J-Dub, man, to J-W North, another Riverside school right here in the Inland Empire. Um, but make, they made it They made it the quarterfinal, unfortunately, not the, not the uh, semifinal. But Elmo then uh, taking on Oaks Christian, and Valencia taking on Chino Hills, of course, right here out of the Inland Empire, Chino Hills. All right, Taryn, what you got? Division 5. So I didn't know Oaks. Christian got into Division 5. Like, I remember Old Christian was playing in the Division 1 playoffs like a couple seasons ago. Like, yeah. that's, uh, yeah, that is very wild to see. And El Modena is going to have its uh, work cut out for them against Old Christian. But I hope to see a competitive game. Like, I feel Chino Hills is probably the dark horse as I didn't expect them to. They haven't really had the best of seasons. In the past, but now they are utilized. They're getting back on track, and they look very impressive. I didn't know Chino Hills had a great football team. It was it, at this point, I thought they were just a basketball school, but now they are a football school too. They're pretty solid, Darren. So yeah, looking good, man. By the way, speaking of teams who were playing at high divisions and not well, kind of lower than what you'd expect to see them at in Division Four. Long Beach Poly, man, they used to be a big time Division One school. Um, will drop to Division Four, but regardless, I don't know. I mean, how long they've been there, but they will destroy Upland last night. Upland, of course, known for a solid football program, uh, you know, pretty pretty recently. Well, Long Beach Poly eats them alive. 
Um, and uh, not very, not very, a uh, very one-sided game. Forty-nine to three, Long Beach Poly defeats Upland as they will go on to take on the winner of tonight. Of course, Bonita out of Laverne, man, the Bonita uh, Bearcats, man. I remember seeing them. Of course, went to a passing league tournament there one time when I was at Paris and played right down the street at ULV. Of course, literally right down the street at Laverne. So, uh, Long Beach Poly, man. I'm sorry, yeah, so Bonita and Cypress, of course, talked about them not too long ago. Cypress will, uh, Bonita and Cypress go head-to-head -to -head tonight, and then they will play the, of course, uh, Long Beach Poly, and then the bracket beneath them, Lacerna taking on Lawndale. Last night, Lacerna moves on 24-20, to as they will now take on St. Francis, and man, big ups to the Pumas, man, unfortunately. It was right here, too, actually, right down the street from us, not too far from TVHS, or right here uh, in Marietta, but down the street in Temecula, Chaparral, man, the Chaparral Pumas would fall. Another Inland Empire team here to St. Francis, 47-22, to as St. Francis will now take on uh, Lacerna. And once again, they'll take on the winner of, of course, Long Beach and whoever wins tonight, Bonita and Cypress, next, uh, in a couple of weeks. So, Taryn, what you got for us? Division 4. I hate to make an early prediction, but I think it's going to be St. Francis and Long Beach Poly in yeah. the final. Just because both of those teams are really good when it they're like historically great programs like all these you also have to consider the strength of schedule league schedule strength of opponents all that stuff when it came to this whole cow prep thing so again there are some flaws into the system but all in all it's a, basically a work in progress so we'll see what happens with long beach poly but i got poly and st francis in the final if all goes well Absolutely, man. That'd be that'd be a great one. Division three. I did not know that Citrus Valley, by the way, out of Redlands, California, which is not too far, of course, right here on the Inland Empire. I mean, a little further, but uh, yeah, that were Division three. That's crazy. But Apple Valley will take on Glendora tonight. Of course, Apple Valley defeated Citrus Valley last week, twenty-one to sixteen. Glendora uh, will defeat Downey, thirty-five to fourteen, last week, and well, they would play. They will play tonight. Apple Valley and Glendora. And then last night, Rancho Cucamonga will take on Roosevelt, and Roosevelt will defeat Rancho Cucamonga 17-7, to two schools that are very close to each other, in, one in Eastville, one in Rancho Cucamonga, not too far away from each other. Roosevelt will move forward once again after a 17-7 to victory, and well, there you have it. They will take on the winner, of course, of Apple Valley and Glendora uh, going on tonight. And then, of course, we have here on the bottom bracket, with uh, the other bracket, Foothill and... Uh, Sarah, Sarah will defeat Foothill 34-7. to Moving forward to take on Etiwanda. Hey, another IE school here, man. Awesome to see that. Uh, Etiwanda, of course, uh, I believe. Uh, solid school, man. 28-21 over Loyola. And, yeah, there it is. Sarah will take on Etiwanda next week. And this is Division Three. so solid stuff there. Taryn, what you got? Roosevelt is a very good team. I don't know if you did this later, but Roosevelt actually rallied from a 21-point deficit in the first round against St. Clemente and wound up winning that game. So Roosevelt is a dangerous team, especially with the league they play in. That definitely helps them out. And honestly, that is probably the toughest team to face in that division. Not saying that Sarah and Etiwata aren't tough, but I think Sarah has potential to like keep up with them we'll see what etawanda has to offer but man that roosevelt team's gonna be a tough out it really is and taryn also division two alamany gets it done last night versus bishop amont man bishop amont of course always a top team well so is alamany and uh they get it done 54 hope saying it right 54 to 38 moving forward to take on inglewood man how about the inglewood sentinels man how about this team Inglewood, Division Two, playing great football. They will win this thing 22-16 to over Edison, of course. And we all know Edison, a solid team then out of uh, Huntington Beach. Well, that was a solid game last night. Of course, as I, we talked about last week, Marietta Valley. School is right down the street from us here in Marietta, not from Cecilia and I. Uh, Edison, man, freaking crap. They will get a nice victory, nice victory over, over Marietta Valley uh, well, last week. This week, unfortunately, will fall just short to Inglewood. Uh, well, unfortunate for them, unfortunate for Inglewood, man. But 22-16, to 16, solid game there. So Alamany will take on Inglewood next week. 
And then we have Orange Lutheran. Orange Lutheran, of course, solid as can be versus CDM. Taryn, you know this team all too well. I love their colors. Same thing as Ramona. Uh, high school, pretty much the same colors there. Even Serrano had some kind of the same colors. But Orange Lou, man, 38-14. to 14. Uh, They will defeat Corona Del Mar. Moving forward to take on Sierra Canyon as Sierra Canyon last night. Down goes another IE school, Vista Marietta, literally super duper close, right down the street. The Broncos, always a solid school up in Division One, Division Two, around there. And well, they would uh, get beat down last night by Sierra Canyon, forty-eight to twenty-three. But hey, it has up to the Broncos in a good season. And uh, well, Orange Lutheran won well, a great season actually to get that far. Orange Lutheran will take on Sierra Canyon, and once again we have Alamany taking on Inglewood, Division Two. Taryn, what you got? I was a little surprised to see Edison losing to Inglewood, but I guess Inglewood is the real deal. Like, Edison has a very stout defense, and their offense can put up is very explosive, but that explosiveness did not help them. They didn't have Parker Awad, who was out for a second game due to COVID protocols. I was also surprised that Corona Del Mar just could not keep up with Orange Lucid. And, like, the Sea Kings, as I know, have a very good team, but they just could not keep up with the Lancers. I mean, Orange Lutheran's playing better than they were early on the season, but still, I thought it was going to be a little bit closer. But it's tough to see their Sunset League teams go down because they're kind of in my neck of the woods. But they have phenomenal years. And you got to give props to some of these uh, other teams. Like, I think Sierra Canyon and Alamany are on a course to meet one another. That is impressive, man. Awesome football there in Division 2. Now after Division 1, we have to review the whole freaking bracket because, well, it just started yesterday. And, well, here we go. Game number one, we talked about it yesterday, Taryn, or last week, and dang it, I was so bummed out. I got the news literally as I was looking to see who they are going to play in the playoffs, and Taryn was like, yeah, I knew you would see that. And I was like, oh, man, but... My mom's Norco Cougars, of course, always been a Norco fan. Um, I mean, it's crazy to think that I would have played for Norco had we have never moved to Paris, but don't get me wrong, I loved it. Wouldn't have had life any other way. But Norco, definitely a solid school back when I was in high school. It was probably a solid school before that, and it's a solid school now. It's always been, at least from what I know, at least from in my time of living. But the Norco Cougars in the Big 8, very strong, strong freaking school. Well, unfortunately for them, they would run into this monster team, Modern Dame. Of course, we all know the juggernaut of high school football. Um, yeah, bring it. I don't care who you are. Bring it. Modern Dame is pretty much that good. I'm just saying. There's a couple teams out there who I think can hang. But, man, Modern Day, 49-14. to 14. They will knock off Norco. Gosh dang it, what a what a huge victory there. And Mission Viejo. Uh, well, that was Orange County versus IE. Going Orange County's way. However, this is also Orange County versus IE going the IE's way. As Centennial, the Huskies will head on over the head on to. Um, I don't know where the game was, but they. I think it was mutual side. I don't know, but all I do know is that they would play Centennial. Mission Viejo and Centennial will go at it, and well, Mark Sanchez's old school would get beat down as the, the Centennial Huskies man get it done, sixty-two to sixteen over Mission Viejo. Huge victory there for the Huskies as they move forward to take on Modern Day next week. I'm pretty sure Modern Day is probably going to eat them for breakfast the same exact way they did the other Big 8 team, Norco. Um, Modern Day is just that damn good. But let's see if they can at least give them a fight. And then we had on the bottom part of that a whole bunch of Orange County and one L.A. team. Servite knocking off Santa Margarita 34-3. to Moving on to take on St. John Bosco. And St. John Bosco, Los Alamitos fought, man. I give them so much credit. They made this a football game. It was still kind of lopsided, but damn it, it wasn't as lopsided as a modern day in Norco or Centennial Mission Viejo. As John St. John Bosco will defeat Los Alamitos 63-38. to And there we have it, y'all. There is a semifinal for the Freaking Division One title in high school football for 2021. Modern Dame versus Centennial. Servite versus St. John Bosco. Darren, what you got? So, yeah, I was very surprised to see Losal putting up 38 against Bosco. And keep in mind, most of those points were not in garbage time. So, all in all, Losal Mios definitely deserves their props. They didn't want to be in Division One, but they didn't go with that attitude. They just said, 
hey, we, we should be honored that we're in Division One, the highest division amongst some of these tougher teams. And for modern-day Corona Centennial, it's basically we're going to get the matchup we should have gotten in Week Zero before COVID decided to ruin that matchup and turn it into a scrimmage. So all in all, I'm really excited for those uh, semifinals, especially St. John Bosco and Servite. That's going to be fun, especially since it's round two. Definitely looking forward to that, Taryn. So a quick little watch here on Division oh, Division One Single A and the NCAA. Michigan is leading Penn State 14-6. Yay! Can Michigan keep it up, though? We'll find out. Meanwhile, in Alabama, they're still destroying North New Mexico State, which is no surprise. Number 13, Baylor is leading number 8, Oklahoma. Okay, I'm just going to be real with you, man. Oklahoma's really starting to irritate me. Like, they, they I don't know. They, if they lose this game, they need to be, like, ranked 20th. I'm sorry, but they, they just annoy me. They're in games that they shouldn't even be in, that they're, like, literally in the game. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> they, they, I digress, but they should definitely be, I don't know, they're, Baylor's a solid team, but I mean, come on, Oklahoma, I mean, anyway, alright, I'm done, I'm sorry, but, at number 17, Auburn, leading Mississippi State right now, 28-17, to 17. also, sorry, Adam Karnick, but number 18, Wisconsin, is actually doing something right for once, I'm just kidding, they've had a rough year, kind of, but Wisconsin leading 35-0 to, uh, to zero over Northwestern, ouch, yeah, that's going on. Hey, Clemson's winning a football game. Hey. I'm sorry, Clemson. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> DJ Uyunglele uh, is actually right now, and speaking of St. John Bosco, he's uh, 20 for 44, 21 for 44 right now, 241 yards, one touchdown, and one interception. I know everyone's all over him right now, but let the kid grow. Let him do his thing. They're facing UConn. UConn's black. But anyway, they're leading right now 34, 37 to 7, and there's really no other game worth talking about. Kind of. Yeah. Anyway, we have, we have Utah, number 24. Uh, <laughs> we have, uh, let's see here. Number 24, Utah taking on Arizona, which I don't think Arizona's going to win that game. And that's pretty much it. So as of right now, Taryn, let's go ahead and get tiny, short, little, teeny snippets into... Wait, Larry. What's up? Uh, I actually wanted to say that uh, at halftime previously, Stanford was leading Florida 42-35, to and someone made the joke that they should, that the, SC, that the NCAA FBS should keep... Vanderbilt and relegate <laughs> Florida to oh, FCS. Oh my gosh. Is that really happening right now? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Oh it's my. It's not anymore. Florida's up 49-42. But if Stanford wins, we need to see we need to see the internet being broken. Please. Oh my gosh. I I really hope Sanford. And the funny thing is is Florida's Florida. I mean, they're not even ranked. I I don't know. This is like beating Clemson. If you come were to beat Clemson right now, I'd be like, "Okay, what do you do?" I'd be saying the same thing with the with the, with the Gators, but that's still hilarious at at this FCS school. I mean, it's more impressive that they're an FCS school. So that's freaking hilarious right out there. So thank you for that. Uh, pretty funny stuff there, dude. But Let's roll in to a snippet, snippet, snippet. I'm talking about small snippets of the uh, of the other, of course, all the other stuff we got to take a look at. Of course, in the triple C double A, we will start there and then make our way up as per usual. But triple C double A, you guys, football going down. I believe we are super close now. Actually, no, the playoffs have begun. So. Um, actually, no, they haven't. I'm sorry. So we are close to getting our little brackets or at least getting some of these, these games here, uh, kind of put together next week. I think is where we're going to actually start seeing the brackets and everything to put together, but regardless, nothing too crazy. Um, looks like today here, Fullerton and Golden West go head to head. Orange Coast taking on West L.A., so best of luck to your team, Taryn, taking on West L.A. today, uh, your Orange Coast Pirates. Cerritos and Mount Sac go head-to-head. -head. All right, that should be a solid one tonight. Next up, L.A. Harbor and Citrus should be another good one. Allie Hancock and Bakersfield. Santa Monica, Santa, uh, Santa Barbara, Siskius, American River, Foothill, Feather, uh, Feather River, Shasta and Butte, San Francisco, uh, City College, San Francisco taking on San Mateo, Contra Costa and Los Mendados. Uh, De Anza and Yuba, Hartnell and Merced, Moore Park, Antelope Valley, Fresno City, Reedley, 
Hey, COD, we'll be taking on Matt Senesinto. Good school right there, good stuff. And then Veterans Night at Wheelock Stadium for your RCC Tigers. Let's go Riverside taking on Chafee, the Panthers, not too far away. A school right up the street, so let's go Tigers. And this one, Sierra taking on Santa Rosa, Grossmont, Pasadena, L.A. Pierce, L.A. Valley. Palomar, El Camino, should be a good game there. Uh, Sequoias and Modesto, should be a good game there. Canyons and Long Beach, should be a good game there. Another good game, San, San, uh, San Bernardino Valley, SBBC taking on Saddleback, another IE versus uh, uh, Orange County matchup there. East LA taking on Ventura, San Jose, and Monterey Peninsula. And San Diego Mesa taking on Southwestern. That should be another good one as well. A little San Diego bout going on tonight. A little, a little good game there. And then I do believe that next week the playoffs will be in full freaking swing. As, yeah, some schools still have regular schedule games, I think. I don't know. But I do know that we should have some playoff games all set. So, Taryn, what you got for us for the Triple C Double A? I just want to congratulate. OCC for actually winning a conference game and not going winless in the conference as they beat LA Harbor last week. And it's like, oh my god, it took the only system for OCC to finally, finally win a conference game. I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but it's kind of the truth. Like, with how snake bitten they've been ever since 2015 past where they had their highest highs. It's been kind of the lowest of lows for OCC, but they finally, finally, finally won that elusive conference team. So, yeah, that's it. You're a mean guy, Darren. It's kind of like you and your Raiders. You know? <laughs> Perfect way to put it, Darren. Ah, uh, touche, good sir. Touche. So, uh, with that said, Let's get on into some, uh, actually some NJCAA going on today. We have here some good games going on, but we do have the SWJCFC playoffs today. Blinn versus New Mexico Military. That should be solid. Uh, and I believe we do have, I think that's the only like playoff cut game we got. Monroe College is currently leading Hawking 49-3 to <laughs> at the end of the third quarter, so that should, wow, that's crazy. Coffeeville. Uh, will be taking on the higher seed hosts, so I don't know who they'll be taking on, but they'll be taking on in the semifinals of the KJCCC. Hutchinson also in the KJCCC playoffs. Hutchinson taking on Independence, another uh, school there from uh, from Kansas, and of course from Last Chance U. And then Butler taking on Garden City also in the KJCCC, of course, in semifinals. So there you have a little bit of... Uh, NJCAA news before we drift off to the NAIA. Got anything there, Taryn? Is Monroe and Hawking going to be playing with a running clock? That's mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. What a mean guy. He's Everybody, Taryn's being mean today, everybody. He's being very mean to these teams. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's For, just, oh my goodness. It, seeing these this uh, one-sided affair. It's like, come on, make it competitive. Like, please score a, please score a touchdown. At least they're not getting shut out. That's for sure. No, I'm with you, Taryn. Like, I mean, gosh dang it. I, we need to find a way. Like, honestly, I think CIF got it right, man. They really did. You know, like, they're making things happen. I guess, I don't know, I like that. They're trying to make these games more competitive, these playoff games more competitive than blowouts. And honestly, man, that's, that, that's a great thing. So... Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm all for it, and he said it with a running clock, man. And the NJCAA actually has a, a Division three and a Division one, which is kind of weird, so I don't know if we'll do the whole relegation or promotion or demotion thing, but either way, I hope they can get it right. Yeah, same here. I I don't understand how they don't have Division two. It's weird, but whatever. Um... But anyway, so yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> Very interesting, to say the least. But with that said right now, I uh, don't know what's going on. The NAIA just continues to bother me with their dang website. But I do have the top 25 for you here. We'll just get into the top 10. Because I do think, we, of course, we have a tournament going on in the NAIA. Uh, and that's not going to start till I believe, next week, if I'm not mistaken. I think. 
we do have, uh, let's see here, yeah, I don't even know, it's so freaking weird, we have some box scores here, we have all kinds of crap going on from, I don't know, but all I know right now is that the current top 10 right now, Bethel out of Kansas looking strong, Concordia, Marion, Indiana, we have Reinhardt, and then number 6, Indiana Westland, and the current top 5, Kansas Westland, Northwestern Iowa, Grandview out of Iowa, Morningside out of Iowa, some strong Iowa schools. And then, of course, Lindsey Wilson out of Kentucky, still number one. Um, honestly, you guys, I just really wish that we can somehow get the freaking schedule or something. But the NAIA, like, bothers me because we're over here trying to cover this. You know what I mean? Because we want to bring NAIA football out, and they do not make it easy for us. It is so frustrating. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm still trying to navigate. Still, I'm still trying to get used to navigating the uh, website as is. And it looks like I finally found the scoreboard. And we've got some good games going on. We've got Kentucky Christian against Reinhardt. That's 9 to nothing, meaning someone scored our, at a score of safety. Lindsey Wilson is eating Cumberlands for breakfast, 21 to nothing at halftime. Um and that's pretty much it for all the noteworthy games at the moment. Concordia of Michigan beat St. Francis uh, earlier today. So, and then there was ooh, there was a big, big matchup. Avila took on Friends, and they won seven nothing. I have no idea who Friends are, but it was a defensive battle. Hey, that looks legit. I know I finally found the scoreboard. Can't believe it. I found it myself. Wow. But yeah, solid games around, man. Talk about that. Um, as of right now, of course, just zoning in on Lindsey Wilson. Incredible. Um, Campbellsville, they will sort of destroy them yeah, today. 77 to 14, which is just wow. Uh, yeah, so they're definitely going to be deep in the playoffs. Also, Marion, a previous NAIA champion. 28-6 to six over Siena Heights, so they're definitely going to be on their way into that tournament. Tabor, I had a buddy of mine, Derek. Big shout out to my boy, Derek White. Makes nice play for Tabor. Uh, 52-27 to 27 with Bethany. Nice victory for them. So overall, you guys, I mean, Benedictine, we saw them make a deep run a couple years ago, I believe, um, over Evangel. It might have been last year, I forgot when, but 34-0. to zero. Morningside, the defending champions from the fall, from the last fall we got to play, of course, in 2019. They won a big one over Northwestern, 55-49. to 49. Solid offensive game there. So, once again, we'll keep you guys uh, we'll keep you guys in the loop, of course, about what's going on in the NAIA coming up, as you know. And, yeah, that sounds like fun. We'll keep, you know, I think the playoffs, once again, are coming on up. So, next up, on to D3 football. And Taryn, 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 dude. We have one more week, and this is it, man. Last week of the regular season. I think we get the seedings tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. But as of right now, I mean, you have schools that are just solid. This is like the – I'm telling you, these are the weeks where it's like hard. Do you play your backups? Because any team can really make a deep run if you just have the right formula, man. Johns Hopkins destroying McDaniel. Do they have their backups in? Do they not have? I mean, they should at this point. But forty-eight to four, forty-eight to seven. Um, that's you know huge going on right now. Uh, let's see here. Also, we do have Taryn. I just want you to. Yeah. Know, I just want you to know something. Trine is beating Hope thirteen to ten. Yay, Trine! <laughs> it's a much competitive game than it was that one year back in two thousand nineteen. Yeah, what was it like fifty thousand hundred to zero? Fifty two to nothing. That was poor team. And then they still got the vote. I I can't believe that. Anyway, that was pretty funny. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, with that said, Mountain Union currently defeating Marietta. Marietta. 21 to 0. So Mount Union doing their thing. You know, they're definitely going to be in them playoffs and make a deep run as per usual. Mayor Harden Baylor are taking on McMurray later on today as well. Uh, we have some good teams right now. Texas Lutheran. Oh my gosh. Harden Simmons over uh, 23 to 0 right now over Texas Lutheran in the first quarter. So yeah, another team that you know is going to make a deep run as well. Um, and just once again, just teams that we're going to certainly see 
moving forward into these Division Three playoffs. We're going to see. Got a lot of senior days. I saw right now senior day. Got some senior days going up today. Uh, oh, also Laverne versus Chapman. So big ups to Laverne. Uh, best luck in that game. That's probably senior day for them as well today. Especially that one senior who got in that accident. Forgot his name, but God bless that young man and his family. Amazing stuff there uh, for him coming back. But we will have the seedings all set for you uh, coming up today. Or not today, but of course coming up for you um, by next week. We should have those. We'll be on our Twitter like crazy. I know it's been kind of rough for us to be all over that thing recently. So my apologies, our apologies. But yeah, so Division 2, y'all, same kind of deal going on. We do have lots of games going on at the moment, but it's just the fact that right now it's what are you doing and how are you doing it? Are you reserving? Are you, are you you know, what are you doing? Are you trying not to get your players hurt? There's some big-time schools right now. Slippery Rock was well, a dang good game going on right now, as a matter of fact. Slippery Rock, number 12, Slippery Rock, taking on number 14, Cuts Down. Cuts Down will lead 24-20 to 20 in the fourth quarter right now so this looks like a very good game coming down to the wire see that's a toughie when you want to try to savor your players maybe they're both in the playoffs maybe they're not maybe one is maybe one isn't how hard are you really fighting right now it's like ah you want to get the better seed of course this is a ranked on ranked game it's always tough if you have that ranked on ranked game at the end of the season i guess i don't know this is crazy so it should be should be pretty good right now well also we have a division two versus an naia school right now west texas a&m taking on bethel out of the naia and well, they're winning this one big time, man. Bethel, uh, sorry, West Texas A&M defeating Bethel 52-9 to right now in the fourth quarter. So, solid game there for those guys. Bowie State, hey, big ups to Daryl's uh, alma mater. Bowie State, as they will defeat Fayette, or they're defeating Fayetteville State 14-0 to right now. Ferris State and Wayne State, I don't want to say upset alert, but... Whoa, boy. Number one Ferris State on the ropes right now is Wayne State is freaking one point down, seven to six in the third quarter. Solid football game. Grand Valley currently number six, defeating Davenport 21 to zero. So, you know, just once again, Taryn, you know, Lisa, when do you call the dogs off? What? How do you call these games? Always very tough games. But once again, we'll have much more for you guys coming up in Division Two. Uh, moving forward because the playoffs will start next week so we need to get those brackets for you next week we'll probably have those like i said sometime tomorrow and we shall see kind of how taryn taryn sent me the brackets that one day i was like oh crap that's awesome you know the brackets were coming on up and getting close um for high school when you know he sent it to me when they were released so thanks brother but there you have it and then of course getting on into division one double a well taryn yeah, we got some craziness going on, as we talked about already. Samford and Florida. Well, unfortunately for Samford, they, uh, the, the dream was short-lived as they were up, you said, up over, over Florida. Big, however, Florida has now just taken, taken, the, taken the wind out of their sails. 56-42 to 42 now in the third quarter. But that defense still needs to be punished for giving up 42 points. Too much offense. Too much offense. It makes me sick. But Florida's defense needs to get punished. I'm sorry. <laughs> they give up 42 points to an FCS school, I'm going to say. No, 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 they don't. Because, you know, some FCS schools just bring it. But we got some good good games here. North Dakota State, after coming off that loss to the Jacks last week, South Dakota State, Youngstown State, man, uh, they're taking it out on them. And Youngstown State, of course, a front runner, that, well, somewhere near the top. They think they won it all a couple years ago. Solid football team. But North Dakota State, man, 35-17. to 17, the Bison lead over Youngstown State. Also, right now, currently going on. Let's see if we have some goodies for you here. Eh, I mean, there are games going on, but no, like, big-time decisive games at the moment. Oh, South Dakota State and South Dakota going head-to-head -head at the end of the first quarter. The Jacks lead 3-0, so got a little rivalry game there. Should be good. So moving forward, and then as for today, yeah, I mean, there's some good ones, but, mm. I mean, you know, it's cool, I guess. But what I'm really looking forward to is next week as well as the freaking bracket does get – oh, I'm sorry. No, the bracket does not get released. I'm sorry. They're, they run a little weird. I think we have to wait a couple more weeks, like two or maybe two or three more weeks or one or two. I forgot. But I know next week we have week 12, and there is a week 12. So brackets will be released in probably a couple of weeks here. And we'll say one – well, probably after next week. I see a couple of games for the 27th and 25th. 
I don't know if those are makeup games. I have no idea. But definitely by Thanksgiving, we should have our bracket all set um, and be good to go. I d forgot. I think it's usually sometime around their turn where the bracket gets released. I thought it was the same time as the other ones, the Division 2 and Division 3, but I don't know. But anyway, Taryn, any comment on any of those divisions, man? I think with the seasons coming down to the wire with some of these leagues, and I think it's a very fun and exciting time. It started with high school, now it's going to jump to like NAI, NJCAA, 3C2A, the list goes on and on. And soon we're going to get the pinnacle of the NCAA FBS. Agreed. Agreed, Darren. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So, once again, our apologies to We Are Southern California guys. So, our apologies for your stay in straight Southern California today. But lots of great playoffs are going on. I seriously don't know how the playoffs work all around the country, but we'll be looking at those at least top 10 around the country right now. Um, next week we will definitely, and I know I always say that, and it's always hard because I always have a lot of work and always craziness, but got to tell you, definitely great stuff talking about it, and we'll get, try to get some more uh, all around the country for high school next week in the playoffs. But off to Division One, single A, as we mentioned already, some crazy games going on at the moment, but the big one, of course, uh, we do have some games here today as Purdue, number 19 Purdue takes on number four, uh, Ohio State, and dude, this game is just a, this is a crazy game. Last week, Purdue freaking stuck it to Michigan State, 40-29, to 29, knocked off number three, Michigan State, and that, well, it deserved a ranked game, because Purdue is now ranked number 19, they're 6-3 and three on the season, once again, you said six games bowl eligible, I did not know that, but I do, and well, Purdue is now bowl eligible, and they're taking on a juggernaut. The one loss, Ohio State Buckeyes, and well, it is absolutely crazy to think that Ohio State, man, it's just nuts. Ohio State would lose one earlier this year to Oregon, of course. Oregon was ranked number 12, and yeah, um, it is absolutely crazy to think that, and I'll tell you what. As of right now, I want to say Ohio State is going to dominate this game. But damn it, Darren. <laughs> is it wrong of me to think Purdue is going to have a nice little set of haymakers to throw? I mean, seriously, dude, is is it wrong of me to think that Purdue is probably going to give them a good fight today? Or am I just delusional? I think it's possible. Any Just like the NFL, there have been, there's been quite a bit of ups going on, and I think that it could possibly be a competitive game between Purdue and Ohio State. Lots to see, though. I agree. I mean, we're going to see how things go. I want to I wanna see this game be really good. I want to. Um, unfortunately, though, it's just sometimes not the case, but we will see. And then, of course, we got uh, tonight, of course, uh, that should be a good, solid game, and I forgot there was one more, oh, Texas A&M and Ole Miss tonight, both teams 7-2, and two, uh, coming up just a little bit, number 11, Texas A&M, number 15, Ole Miss, and then, of course, number 16, NC State, and number 12, Wake Forest, a couple more ranked on ranks for you, but Taryn, what you got for those two games, what are you thinking for those? For which, for which matchup again, sorry, sorry, I, I kind of, my phone a little. You're good, man. So we got, of course, tonight, or coming up in just a little bit, number 11, Texas A&M, and number 15, Ole Miss, and then, of course, number 16, NC State, and number 12, Wake Forest. Okay, now I see it. Yeah, that Ole Miss-Texas uh, A&M matchup is going to be very fun. I will go with... Would I, be here? Would I sound wrong if I said Ole Miss was going to win that's because Ole Miss has a high-powered offense. I think I'll take Ole Miss, and then NC State versus Wake Forest. I'll take Wake Forest. Those are solid, solid there, man. So, at the end of the day, let's get ready and set for the big one coming up tonight. Of course, another solid game, which should be fun. Number 25, Arkansas and LSU. And also, Kansas and Texas. I, I'm going to sound like an a-hole here, but you know what? Texas is so up and down. It would be hilarious if Kansas somehow won this game. But anyway, with that said, sorry, it's me, as being, uh, uh, me being salty from USC still in 2006. But quick go here. Taryn, why is USC Cal postponed? Coach, 
COVID protocols. Oh, That's wonderful. why Cal doesn't have a, not enough players to play when it comes to COVID. And they had over half their players out from last week against Arizona, which wound up being an Arizona win. So all in all for Cal, they said they postponed it to December 4th, which, I mean, I guess. That's stupid, but okay. I mean, no, I get it. That sucks. That really does suck, and I hope everybody gets well, but that really sucks. But anyway, that's going down. And then, of course, the big game tonight, man. So let's hope everybody gets well, of course, from COVID on Cal and anybody else out there. But with that said, Taryn, the big one tonight, man, number nine, Notre Dame at 8-1, and one, Virginia at 6-3. and three. I really don't understand why this is like the big primetime game. I guess think it was a scheduled no matter what. But Virginia, I mean, they've had some okay games. But overall, Notre Dame's the kind of monster here. I mean, you want to go ahead and review this one for us? Yeah, Notre Dame's probably going to roll the victory. I'll be surprised if Virginia does keep up, but I think it's going to be a Notre Dame victory all the way. Yeah, I'm almost positive, too. It's not going to be... It's going to be kind of lopsided, so pretty certain there, man. But yeah, so should be a good game um, in the first half. <laughs> Notre Dame should put it away by the second, but we'll see. So with that said, Taryn, brother... That, we're going to cut it short, course. we got our meeting coming up in about nine minutes, the IE Sports Radio meeting, okay, getting some things together and some, some you know, cross the T's, dot in the I's, of course, for our new era. But with that said, turn, brother, where can all these diehard fans find you? You can find me on Twitter, at TaronRodriguez1. You can also find me on Set Point and on SoCal Supreme Sports Show, at Set underscore point, IE, and at SoCal Show, IESR, but... My main content is at Channel Rodriguez 1. All righty. Well, with that said, you guys, there we have it. And there it is, y'all. So with that said, y'all know the drill. Always fun. And, well, we wish you all the best this week, everybody. Enjoy it. One more week till Thanksgiving, man. Let's do this. Cue the music because we're out of here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today's show. Man, that was a fun one, as always. Talking about lots of great football from high school all the way up to the higher division of college, all the divisions of college. So, definitely excited for that. And we appreciate you all so very, very much for being a part of it. With that said, you guys, that is going to do it for us here today. And, well, we'll be ready for the next week with a whole bunch more. Starting to take this opportunity. Big up for our sponsors. Of course, Backrock Tech International, get from the WWE, www.bcin.com, of course, SoCal Warriors, on Twitter at SoCal Warriors, show some love, man, great people, of course, great stuff all around from our sponsors, we appreciate them also very much for uh, showing us love, and of course, the entire Ice Sports Radio team. That is going to be it for today's show, you guys, and we'll get back next week, we got plenty more to come because, well, we are just getting started, you guys. But we are really just getting started. So, I'm excited. I hope you're excited because we're ready. With that said, y'all, for my fellows, and I'll be good for myself, maybe. We will see you guys next week. Until then, take care, and as always, God bless.